This is the story of two of D.I.Z.'s brightest stars. And on an early morning, about three decades ago, at separate ends of the galaxy, this story begins. These two nutty kids were born who would someday change the face of radio in cities across this great land of ours. Yes, I'm testifying about America's own Baxter and Mark. Although way back then, America as a whole didn't much give a rat's rectum. They were born in the 50s when broadcast TV show biz was in its infancy. The Howdy Doody show. And for the whole nation, it was Howdy Doody time. Yeah, Howdy was a giant in the industry. He was a very powerful network puppet. And a great influence on the two of us and, and on Ted Koppel as well. Soon the 50s and 60s brought music to TV with Elvis on the Milton Berle and Sullivan shows. And it didn't escape the boys' attention. Whenever a rock song was playing, girls began to wriggle and coo. I was real little watching my sister and her girlfriends dance about the living room. They were watching rock music on TV. I think it was Hullabaloo or Shindig or something like that. And Well, it would, it would stir something very deep inside me. Something would happen physiologically. Of course, I was too young then to understand, but but now I know. Now it now it is all very clear what I was experiencing: constipation. Mark Farnswickel and his sister and parents, the fabulous Flying Farnswickels, a retired circus family, had hung their trapezes permanently in Cheyenne, Wyoming. While Alan Baxter was adjusting to his new family just outside Washington D.C., where his real parents left him just before returning to their home planet in a distant galaxy. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's hard to get used to even now. I mean, uh, you know, like, for example, people seem to enjoy listening to me on the radio, but sometimes when they're around me in person, they become apprehensive, almost repelled by some sixth sense that seems to tell them I'm different. Hey, I can't help that. And let me tell you, people can be really cruel sometimes. Get away from me, you, you repulsive creature. Although these two well-adjusted guys had never met, fate would soon bridge the thousands of miles between them. Baxter, who as a small child became shy and introverted after neighbors repeatedly chased him home with torches and ball-peen hammers. He first took an interest in performing while practicing magic tricks in front of a mirror, hoping to astonish, befuddle, and amaze people into liking him. Eventually, he took up playing guitar in an effort to serenade his doves and magic bunnies into not running away in terror. Good little birdies don't sit up on my shoulder and poop. Obedient bunnies won't end up in the soup. While Mark, coming from a family of circus folk, was a natural performer and entertained other neighborhood kids by putting on plays in his garage where he'd always play the part of the swashbuckling masked gynecologist, carving a magic marker happy face into his patient's buttocks. His first interest in performing music came as a fascination with drums, which stemmed from the masked gynecologist's experiments with anesthesia, using wooden mallets on the more difficult patients. Around the same time, our guys stopped jamming in high school bands and decided to stop dreaming of someday hearing their songs on the radio and instead take a shortcut by putting themselves on the radio so they could play their own songs. And after breaking into radio at small stations, both were eventually released on bail and actually got DJ shows. And the rest, as they say, is radio history. <laughs> After teaming up at a Denver radio station in the mid-70s, Baxter and Mark were among a small handful of early radio pioneers to use offbeat humor on the FM side of the dial in the usually too-hip, laid-back heyday of freeform album rock radio, for which they received the Nobel Prize. Their task in the great Rocky Mountain state now completed, Baxter and Mark set out on a mission to bring their own brand of fun morning rock radio to the wilderness of America's showbiz frontiers. To enlighten the backward savages of radio management in new ways and ideas for this wacky, wonderful, magic little thing called FM Rock Radio. And through their relentless efforts, they've touched the lives and private parts of millions of radio listeners and more than their share of superstar celebrities, too. Crossing the paths in the palms of politicians, rock stars, TV, movie idols, Baxter and Mark have remained the same wonderful down-to-earth guys, even though at times showbiz seems to revolve around them much like parasitic flies around a dung heap. And those same fertile minds four years ago brought their mission to Orlando, Florida. Base of operations, WDIZ Radio. And in those four years, they've been praised and pummeled by the press, imitated and challenged by numerous pretenders and would-be contenders to their title, 
and most importantly, loved and relied upon by hundreds of thousands in Central Florida who want to start their days just a little bit brighter. We salute you, Misters Red, White, and Occasionally Blue. Happy anniversary, Baxter and Mark. You nutty, nutty guys.